to come into our life. What does it look like today, the highways and the byways? We're in 2023. What does it look like to go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come? The harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. Yeah. I mean, we know this, and you've heard that all your life. People use that constantly, so that's nothing. So, so now we're still here in 23, an appropriate message. You know, are we ready to do God's work? It's amazing that even myself, as a pastor, I get overwhelmed when I try to do something that he's not asked me to do. The frustrations of life, uh, it gets fickle, it gets fleeting, it gets fragile because I'm out here trying to be what he's called me not to be. I want you to understand that, and this is what happens to so many of us. And so the very first thought I want you to think about, it's time to become a worker. You sit on your butts long enough. You've gotten enough stuff. And I, I've been saying that to you. I, I think some of you just didn't understand the very first message that was preached here. When I came back here, you go back and you look at it. God's special person. I don't get you even very one bragging. God's special person hooking up with God's special people to do God's special work. So you got to understand. I, I knew what God had put on me. I understand. I've been pastoring long enough to know that it's just not about Sundays and Wednesdays. And I'm showing you. I'm out amongst so I'm not going to ask you to do something. But some of you just want to just sit and get. And I need you to be a worker. I, the, the, come on. The harvest is plenty. But the labors are few. And to be really fulfilled. I'm telling you. D says something so powerful. I hope you get it. I mean in everything that you do. You got to bring that type of energy. And I love it when folks say, man, do you ever, are you ever not on 10? Are you ever just calm down? I really am. But when it, you just see me because I'm not here doing what God has called me to do. So it looks like that. But yes. I mean, it doesn't take long. I mean, just that it's time to become a worker. You've gotten enough. You've been taught well enough. You've sent the feet. So now it's time to do the work. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The time is coming. The night is coming when no one can work. I love what you said. I'm 77. Man, I need to start telling some of these stories. Life can come at you so fast. You don't even realize. It's like, whoa, now I can't do this. Now I can't do this. And how did I get here? So the first thing, and maybe you got to realize, the number one, the first thing, the need to work. It's interesting when I was studying this and how Jesus never let an opportunity go. Because remember I told you I'm trying to think like him and look at folk like him and see. So when I'm around my family, when I'm around my friend, when I'm around my co-worker, where do I see the need to work? I'm telling you, folks, when they lie to you, and how do you do that? When they can lie, and how do you have the need to work? Brother, I'm telling you, there's so many assignments that we let go. And then we go and we go away and we talk about them. Come on now, look at we talk about them versus a need to work. Not every family member is where they need to be. Not every co-worker is where they need to be. That, that's why Jesus said every opportunity is to bring the light. Every opportunity is to bring the good news. And I said, man, I missed that so much. A need to work. So I'm breaking out some new stuff. A need to work. Why do you come to Bible study? Why do you come to Sunday school? Why do you come to church? Why do you pray? Why do you read? And then when God gives you a sign, you drop the ball. Oh, I'm gonna come on, man. This stuff's been so good for me too. A need to work. When you got the family member on drugs and they quit calling the counselor, you know it cost. You got the answer. It's the gospel. A need to work. When you got family, when you got friends, when you got co you, you know that they're going through stuff. And it came into your lap and it fell at your feet. A need to work. Quit passing it off to somebody else. Why did it come to you? Ah, huh. Obedient to the word of God first. Because I must work the works of him. Come on now. I must work the works of him. And brothers, when you work the works of him, you got to be obedient because I just told you, you're going to get rejected. 
Folk gonna quit calling you. Folk gonna start talking about you. When you start working for the Lord, cause you're not gonna get fooled on and get them home. Fools is no longer in your circle. You have matured. You're walking in wisdom. It ain't because you're so holding down. You just don't tolerate foolishness like you used to. You have a standard in Christ now. And brother, I'm telling you, and I keep telling you, that's why you have to be obedient to the word of God first. It's really not that hard. Others' needs and problems above your own. Ooh-wee. Oh, man. Oh, because I'm working, because I'm working for the Lord, and because I'm walking with him, and because I'm walking in wisdom, I can put my stuff aside to help someone else. How will they know? And you've heard this many times. By the love you have one for another, and the last time I checked out love, love is in action. And brother, so many times we'll say, I gotta get myself right, I gotta get my stuff right if I can help somebody else. And it's so mad, it's so unbiblical, and that's why we get ourselves in a mess. Because you're always concerned about yourself before you're concerned about somebody else. Amen. Amen. Ouch. Ooh, wee. That's why we on empty. You ready? I'm going through that. I said, man, I got whipped too. The reason why you're not getting filled up, huh? go, put your water, go put some water in your tank for gas and see how far you go. Come on now. I've been there. I tell folks all the time. Cole and I, the first thing we do, because early on, we, got, we, we learned real quick early on in our marriage. We got a car that only took premium. And every time we try to put something in there, she said, mm-hmm, pow, pow, pow. You ain't going nowhere today. You shouldn't have bought this car to take premium if you can't afford premium. I put that gas in, STP. I put all kinds of lucas. I said, we'll get this cheap gas. we just throw some of that in there. Oh, baby, not today. I'm a premium baby. <laughs> now, you can see that. Come on now. And, brother, what are you being filled with? So you can see the word, and it, and it kicks back. And the reason why you can't because, look what it says, the love of others is what fills us up daily. I've got to work. I've got to find somebody to love on. I've got to find somebody to help. I've got to find somebody to pray for. I've got to work for the Lord. Now, we don't get this kind of clear preaching, and that's why we get so messed up. How many church, how are they going to wear you out unless you're working for the Lord? You've heard, I can say all that stuff you done heard all you Too much is given, much is required. Come on now, God put you to head. God gave you this. Come on now. You don't want in the family that got the education. You don't want the family that got a little bit more money. You don't want the family that's carrying the family. And that's okay because God has carried you. Amen. Man, how much do I really love the others? The second main thought of that, of this text, the second main thought, the specialized work we are called to do. And man, this messed me up, because I kept saying, what are the works? Because I don't want to keep doing it. What are the works? And I was reading something today, because sometimes it it bothers me, and I can say, you guys, I preach so much clarity, I preach my life, and you can see it, because one of the times we were talking about something, and... uh, my wife was telling me because she got so close to my sister. And it was crazy because I'm doing all this stuff. I'm like, every time she needed diapers, every time she needed this, I was in there when she had the baby. I'm doing all this stuff. And one day, I said, well, you know, if you really want to know the truth, let me tell you. She told me. She said, you know, she said, I never had my brother's heart. I just got his stuff. Oh, I know if I needed a dollar, he'd be there. But if, it, if I needed his attention, if I need him to give me a hug, come on, now don't look at me like I'm crazy. She's some of you And I'm like, what does she mean? I gave her everything. Like, hey, I bought her this. I gave her this. I bought her clothes. Okay. But all I wanted was his love. And brother, I'm here to tell you, the relationship is built on help. O-V-E, not the food, not the clothes, not all the stuff we're talking about. It's built on L-O-V-E. And I kind of got whipped. I'm like, man, 
because I was like, dang, God, all the stuff I did, only what you do for Christ will last, and it's all caught up in the love. So when I was working this text, I kept saying, what are the specialized? And boy, I love when God makes it plain. This is what we're supposed to be doing. And sometimes you can run your mouth, you can do all this, but if you ain't doing the specialized work of God, then you're not going to see the fruits of God. Preaching. And guess what, brother? You're all ministers. I hear you preaching about stuff that don't mean nothing. You preach about foolishness. You'll stand flat foot on a bunch of fools there, but when it comes to the real type of preaching, the good news, what happens? You'll preach about politics. You'll preach about sports. You'll preach about, come on now, but when it comes about preaching the good news, you want your mouth go, hmm. You mute. Stuff don't mean that you run your mouth. I'm quiet, but I, I didn't see you quiet the other day running about, talking about something that didn't mean nothing. Praying. We on this praying kick. I'm like, wow, these are the things he calls specialized. And man, it's crazy. Preaching, praying, rebuking, suffering, and dying. What an outlook. That's what Christ did. And we to be Christ like, that's what our life is. He came and preached to them. He prayed for them. He rebuked them. Come on now. He suffered and then he died. What a life. But it was a beautiful life because he did the work that was sent by. Oh, come on now. The reason why our life gets so messed up is we keep trying to add stuff to it. Amen. So who you preach to? Who you been praying with? Who did you have to rebuke? See, I ain't got it. So you know this. Who did you lay down and suffer with? Sometimes a part of suffering say, baby, I can't feel what you're going through, but I'm going to try to walk through this with you. Amen. I'm going to try to hold your hand. I'm going to, you know. I'm always learning. I talk a lot too, but I listen well too. You just don't realize because that stuff comes. But yesterday, we would visit Miss John. She said something that was so powerful. And the first lady, and I said, wow, we. I walked, I've been thinking about that all today. Yesterday, was talking about, she said, she said, one of the people who just lost her husband a year or two ago said something. People will try to tell you it gets easier. People will try to tell you this, but guess what? No one knows what you're going through. So I've learned that if I, if I don't try to go saying that, look, it didn't say nothing there. You just preach, you just pray, you just rebuke, you suffer, and you die. Come on now. Because at the end of the day, every one of us in here is going to die. The problem is, before you die, have you done the things that we've been called to do? And guess what? Rebuking is one nobody likes to do, but I'm glad Jesus did it, and he did it well. Cause he said, whom he loved, he chastised. Yeah. And every now and again, don't tell me you love me, and I love you, and I let you walk off the cliff, and then I try to jump off the cliff with you, and we both going to kill ourselves. That's the kind of love we have for one another. You wait till they get off the cliff and then you try to save them. You saw them walking toward the cliff. You saw them walking up the cliff and you didn't do nothing to you. You saw them about ready to fall off the cliff. Huh? And that's crazy. And I'm like, how do we keep from letting them get to that point? Because now I'm trying to save you. I can't swim, but you want me to jump in the 12 foot and try to save you. I'm calling the lifeguard because I can't help you. You should have stayed down here in the baby pool with me, and I could have helped you. Come on now, Trekker. You can see the world. You can see that. You can come on now. Brother, you got to be mature. You got to know what God has called you to do. And I am a lifeline to so many folks when I'm working because what God has called me to do. But if I'm not doing what God called me to do, then all I'm going to do is put more trouble on you. Jesus came into the world not to get ahead in business or to get rich, but rather to do the work of him who sent him. I don't know how many times I've spent a lot of my life, Brother Theron, what you said in the testimony today, we spent so much of our time in the first part, so opposite of Jesus. And then we finally get it, and then we realize, I tell folk all the time, we give the world so much stuff and then we get to retirement age, you can't enjoy it. 
back hurting, feet hurting, <coughs> head hurting. Didn't take the time when I could have took the time to go do the things that I should have done. Come on, because it said take some rest, amen. But I waited because I was chasing all this other stuff and before. Huh? But guess what? The only way to keep from getting like that is you've got to be on bending knees and talking to the Lord daily. Because the world comes at us fast. And what does that look like? It is later than you think. There's not a day that goes by that somebody doesn't text or call and ask me about coach shop. I'm just like, wow, it's crazy. I'm sort of listening to her. So if I get that as a pastor who just played for me, what does Miss Johnson get? What well, I talked to Dennis just, I said, what do the boys get? Well, people say that automatically. And how does this happen? That's just them today. That's the hot one. You're going to have someone die. Then you'll be on there. And just kind of what happened because his life was so public. And that was with different. And then, and Derek says something because when your life's public like that and you're sharing them with everybody and you're going through, it's, it's later than you think. And brothers, I didn't realize that I got to make sure that I keep the main thing, the main thing, because I got caught up in so much other stuff and I lost what it really is all about. How will they know the love, the preparation, everything that we put in place because it's later than you think. Nighttime is coming. Amen? Amen. Our time has its limits on it. Here today, gone tomorrow. See, we all keep saying we got time. I, we could all walk out of here today. Somebody be in a, come on, I'm saying the thing about the coach I talked to this week. And I'm like, man, how life comes at you. And a young man, a star football player, I'm close to the AD down there, close to the coach down there. I just mind his own business. Four of the young folk in the car, he's 18, they in a wreck and he's dead. And it's got the whole community off. And they all keep asking the same question. Good kid, wasn't drinking, wasn't selling drugs, just a good kid. And somehow he gets hit. And then a few days later, a, a young kid out there working on I-75, not drinking, not cutting up. I'm trying to preach it something, doing his own work. And a tire blows up and rolls over and hits him and kills him. It is later. Then you think. And I'm just like, wow, not the stuff we heard, not somebody out here shooting up and gang banging, somebody just doing what, what they do, working and doing it, and two things, in a car wreck, not speeding, not drinking, not doing all this, but somehow it was his time. And I know the word of God to me can say, take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow's not promised. But I've got my life planned out six years down the road, ten years down the road, and I ain't taking care of the day. And yes, it hits us all. We're all praying. I'm on the football field Friday night talking to the football coach from East Jasmine about what happened because he's in the same circle because it is a fraternity and it does hurt because that's his Mason County community now but what about my community tomorrow if it was to happen school getting ready to come back and we looking at life and life does come at you fast whether you are a preacher come on now a Sunday school teacher a deacon a member what are you saying to the people you are coming in contact with daily See, don't talk all these titles. That's for the preacher. That's for the deacon. That's for the Sunday school teacher. That's for the mama. That's for the daddy. All these assignments, all the folks that you come in contact with daily, what are you saying? What are you speaking? What are you talking? It is later than you think. And brother, I am telling you, if we don't give them something to hold on to, and when you get that phone call, you will lose your mind. Because the Bible says, hold on to this world loosely. Only what you do for Christ will last. I didn't realize how tight I was holding on to this world stuff that you can't take with you. Only what you do for Christ will last. Yes, sir. It's a beautiful thing to sit and hear and get to watch wisdom and hear work 
and you see things. And I've been fortunate to be around two or three unbelievable godly men that had their affairs in order. They had it all laid out. And then I've been around some unfortunate men that did not have their affairs in order. And I'm like, okay, God, you let me see this in here. So you better make sure you got your affairs in order because it's, life is fickle. Life is, come on now. And before you know it, it's here today and gone tomorrow. So whatever role you're playing, whether you are a preacher, the Sunday school teacher, the deacon, or just a member, don't you ever think that the people that know that you come to church, they know that you read the Bible, they know that you pray, they know that you say you're a man or a woman.